Okay, so in my experiment, I tested the um, effect of light intensity and distance of light on flowering of short day plants. So um, street lights and other sources of artificial light in our community are proving to be a serious threat to the ecological community because of the effect that light has on plants. And because of the circadian rhythm of plants, some plants need a certain period of uninterrupted darkness in order to be able to flower. So before I get started, I just want to explain what a circadian rhythm actually is. A circadian rhythm is basically a 24-hour biological clock in organisms, and I'm going to be talking about the circadian rhythm in plants today. Um, because of the psychological clock that plants have, researchers have determined that the night length the plant receives has a critical effect on plants um, and their flowering. And photoperiodism is the response that plants have to changes of their length in night or day. So the effect of how much uninterrupted darkness a plant gets has been classified into three different types. There's um, day neutral plants which aren't affected at all by the night or day length they receive on their flowering. But short day plants, they can only flower with a long period of uninterrupted darkness. They won't flower when they have short nights. And they also won't flower if a flash of red light is flashed. If they have a long period of darkness, but then there's a flash of red light, they still won't flower. But the interesting thing is, is if they do have a long period of darkness, and they get flashed with red light, and then followed by that, they get flashed with far red light, they still will flower. Long day plants, totally opposite of short day plants, um, flower with only short nights, and don't flower with long nights. And it's the exact reverse with the red light and far red light situation. So you're probably wondering why I just mentioned that red light and far red light. Um, pigments called phytochromes are responsible for this phenomenon. Red light converts to phytochrome R, which is the red light observing form of phytochrome, to phytochrome FR, which is the far red light absorbing form, and vice versa for far red light. At night, plants make more phytochrome R and break down more phytochrome FR. Therefore, there's more phytochrome R during the night. But then in the morning, because phytochrome FR has all been converted to phytochrome R, there's a buildup of phytochrome R, and then it's converted back to phytochrome FR. So why does this affect flowering? These phytochrome conversions allow for a plant's biological clock to determine when it's morning or it's nighttime. Therefore, by flashing red light or far red light or white light, because white light encompasses red and far light, red light. During the night of a long day or short day plant, this can reset the plant's biological clock because it's reversing the conversions between the phytochromes and therefore this inhibits their flowering. So why is this important? Because of the white light that's emitted from street lamps um, during the night, short day plants are not getting the continuous amount of darkness that they need. Therefore, these plants aren't flowering, which then leads to their fruit production to decrease, which then directly affects nocturnal pollinators. and they stop pollinating the plants, which can be very harmful. Um, according to recent studies, the visits of nocturnal pollinators are 62% lower in streets with street lights than they are in streets without street lights. So my question was, are there any other factors that affects the short day plants negatively when they are flashed with light during their long period of uninterrupted darkness? So I decided to test how the intensity of this light when it's flashed during the uninterrupted period of darkness and the distance that the light is away from the plant, how it would affect their flowering. So would it matter if the light was farther or closer to the plant or brighter or dimmer? Would that affect their flowering at all? So my materials, I used seven Christmas cactus plants, which are all short day plants and three different types of light bulbs, and obviously a lamp and a ruler to measure the distance from the light. Um, I hypothesized that the 100 watt light bulb, since it had the highest intensity of light, would have the worst effect on the flowering of the plant, and that the closer the plant was exposed to the light, the more negative impact the light would have on the flowering of the plant. So basically, I took the um, light bulb and put it in the lamp, and then I exposed two plants to each light bulb. So I exposed two plants to 7.5 watt light, two plants to the 100 watt, and two plants to the 60 watt. But I placed one plant two inches away from the light and the other plant two feet away from the light. So I would be able to measure both the um, distance away and the intensity. And I also had a control plant that had uninterrupted 
period of darkness with no flashing of light in it. Okay, so the plants, um, plants three, five, and seven, these three plants were located two inches away from the light, and they overall had the worst growth rate than the plants that were located two feet away from the light, which were plants two, four, and six. And this is what I expected from my hypothesis. But the data showed that plant three, which was exposed two inches away from the light, from a 100 watt light bulb, and plant five, which was exposed two inches away from a 60 watt light bulb, they had the same growth rate, which I didn't expect at all. But plant seven, which was exposed two inches away from the 7.5 watt light bulb, had a higher growth rate than plants three and five, which I expected because it had the lowest um, intensity. So as you can see here, um, the red plants two, four, and six are the plants that were located two feet away from the light. And as you can see, all the bars that are red had significantly higher growth rates than the colored bars plants one, or plants three, five, and seven, which were the plants located two inches away from the light. And um, again, as you can see, the yellow and the green are plants three and five. These were the plants located two inches away from the 60 and 100 watt light bulbs. And they both had relatively um, a close growth rate, which I didn't expect. And plant one is the control plant, and it obviously, because it was the control, had a much higher growth rate. Plant six, which was exposed two feet away from the 7.5 watt LED light bulb, had the most bud growth out of all the plants experimented with that um, were located two feet away from the light. And plant seven, which was exposed two inches away from the 7.5 watt LED light, had the most bud growth out of the plants that were located two inches away from the light. So overall, the 7.5 watt LED light had the least negative effect on the flowering of the plants. And the plant that was exposed to the 60 watt light two feet away, plant four, had a higher growth rate compared to the plant that was exposed to the 100 watt light two feet away, which was plant two. So again, here's the graph again, um, showing that plant two, just we'll go back for a minute. Plant two, which was the 100 watt light, which is the blue, had a much lower growth rate than the plant four, which was exposed to the 60 watt at the two feet. And then here's um, a bar graph just showing their overall um, growth of buds over my 10-day experiment, and the control plant had much larger growth which was expected, and plant six, which was the 7.5 watt LED light, had the most growth overall, and it was located two feet away from the lamp. Okay, so the results indicated that the plants located two inches away from the light had the worst growth rate compared to the plants located two feet away. Like the hypothesis, the 100 watt light did have the worst effect on plants located two feet away from the light. However, unlike the hypothesis, the 100 watt light and 60 watt light had the same negative effect on plants when they were located two inches away from the light. And I, can, um, I determined that this was because the heat of the light um, affected the plants in the same way because they were located two inches away. But because the 7.5 watt LED light emits less heat, the, seven point, the plants that were exposed to that light two inches away had a greater growth rate. And um, the experiment also demonstrated that the 7.5 watt LED light had the least overall negative effect on the plants both two inches and two feet away. That would be great, yeah. Because I always wonder why are they using pink and purple lights in their hot houses in the morning? Right yeah. I'm curious, with your research, did you come up with, it's not mentioned in your conclusion, but it was mentioned at the start of this whole thing about why you did this in terms of the effect of street lights. Did you arrive at a recommendation in terms of the, what we should do, like in cities where, where you have a lot of street lights in your Yeah. Streets? Well, I would def definitely recommend that the lights would be dimmer on the street lights because you can still see, but they, didn't, they don't have to be at like such a high intensity. And I think also, since there are so many plants and trees around, maybe they could put the street lights farther away. Like if there's like a big 
tree area, they could, instead of placing the street light right next to it, they could place it across the street because it'll have less of an effect on its pollination. I, I just have a quick question. Yeah, so um, I kept them all, w during the daytime, I let them, um, I had them nice next to a nice brightly lit window. But then um, when it came out towards the nighttime, I gave them, I, it was about 14 hours. So I remember when I came right home from school, I would put them in the dark. And then when I woke up from school, I would take them out again. And that was the 14 hour window. But then around um, late at night, I would take out the certain plants and that's when I would expose them. And then I put them right back in the dark. So it was the quick flash flood.